international success coach and noted author, Constance Arnold, delivers life-changing strategies through her own spiritual practices, as well as with best-selling authors and experts she interviews. Think, Believe, and Manifest is specially designed to empower your mind and your words to work for you and to bring about the life you've been dreaming of. And now, here's Constance Arnold. Well, hello everyone and welcome to the Law of Attraction Radio Network. And I am Constance Arnold, your host of the Think, Believe, and Manifest talk show. And of course, today I am broadcasting live with just a little touch of Southern flavor from cold Atlanta, Georgia, and I'm so excited that you have joined me tonight from all over the world, and guess what, if you are listening tonight or or maybe it's during the day or early morning, that means that the Spirit of God has attracted you here, and you're going to receive just what you need in order to continue to live an abundant and purposeful life. Well, how are you doing? And uh, like I said earlier, I don't know what time of day it is for you. You might be having a cup of coffee or a cup of tea if you live in London uh, or, or those areas in the UK. But as the Bible says, this is the day that God has made, and we're going to what rejoice and be glad in it, no matter what your circumstances look like. So let me say happy holidays to all of my listeners all over the world. And can you believe we are just 10 days away from Christmas Day? It's amazing. And uh, it seems like time has literally accelerated this year. Well, I am doing well. Of course, I'm excited about the holidays. And I think I shared with you guys a couple of shows ago that I deliberately set my intentions for the holidays. And what I wanted was to have a festive time. And guess what? Because I set my intention, my holidays uh, are unfolding just like I had imagined. So basically, I've just been having a great time. I've been invited to some Christmas gatherings and parties, and uh, I'm going to take a scenic tour of Christmas lights here in Atlanta because we're pretty big and, you know, really decorating our homes. And I'm going to serve and give to those less fortunate than I am. So uh, I'm going to have a great time doing this holiday season. I, I want you to email me at Constance at FulfillingYourPurpose.com and let me know what you're going to be doing during the holidays. It is so interesting how different people celebra- celebrate Christmas really differently. And I have a lot of Jewish friends who've already celebrated and so I want to hear from you also. So additionally, I'm going to be spending some quiet time just sort of thinking and listening to the Spirit to kind of get a clear idea and a clear picture and revelation of what my direction should be for 2004. I've already received some inklings, but I just want to get a clearer picture because you know, you always hear me say that clarity is the first key to success. And so when you are clear about what you desire, the entire universe begins to move in your life and uh, assist you to manifest that. Well, I have a great show in store for you today, and my very special guest is going to be sharing about how you can begin to manifest the big stuff. I mean, your most outrageous desires and dreams, and I want you to stay tuned for that. But before he comes, I want you to share that I have a brand new website. Yay! It's taken me about six months, and so I'm really proud of it, of course, The address is still the same, and that's fulfillingyourpurpose.com. So go take a look at it and let me know what you think. Also, while you are there, make sure you visit my products page, and there you will find all kind of goodies to help transform your life. I have a lot of freebies, but I also have my coaching package, affirmations, and my book. And 
uh, these are just a few of the manifestations that people have written me about how my coaching and my products have really assisted them in manifesting. Um, a new home on the beach. One person is married and now pregnant with a child. All kinds of new cars. Another person quit their 9 to 5 and started a profitable business. Don't you love that word profitable? Uh, another person and so many people have released 60 pounds. So many people listen to my self-love CD and that really changes and reprograms their subconscious. Traveling to foreign countries, healed of the and procrastination, and went from $60,000 to $2 million. And so those are just a few examples of of how how people's lives have been changed and transformed just from using my products. So go to fulfillingyourpurpose.com and remember you are worth the investment. Also, while I am thinking about it, next Sunday I'm going to be teaching on how to attract genuine love in your life. You know, I was thinking this week for about 10 years I conducted support groups and share groups and coaching groups to probably about 5,000 women in the area of relationships, and I rarely teach on that, and so that's what I'm going to be teaching on next year. All right, so I'm going to start next Sunday, but I'm going to be doing more and more teaching in 2014 on the whole attracting love and attracting your soulmate and 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 just like as as my very special guest tonight is going to be sharing those big desires that you have. Well, I want you to stay tuned and I'm going to be right back with my very special guest, Mr. Greg Coon. Are you ready to create the life of your dreams? Imagine partnering with a coach that can help you manifest extraordinary success. Constance Arnold has been a licensed therapist and coach for over 25 years and has successfully worked with more than 10,000 clients. Constance will help you clarify your goals, eliminate self-defeating beliefs, and create strategic plans to manifest your dreams. Constance offers a variety of coaching packages, pay-as-you-go, half-yearly, and yearly coaching. Contact Constance today for guaranteed coaching that produces extraordinary and permanent results. For more information, go to fulfillingyourpurpose.com. You're listening to Law of Attraction Radio Network, enhancing the well-being of millions of listeners worldwide. LOARadioNetwork.com is heard through 25 different Internet radio stations, as well as iTunes Radio, Stitcher.com, and our mobile apps. The Law of Attraction Radio Network, your trusted source of daily inspiration at LOARadioNetwork.com. Well, I hope you enjoyed those commercials, and I am back and really, really excited about my very special guest tonight. My very special guest is best-selling author, Mr. Greg Kuhn, and Greg is a professional educator and a futurist. He specializes in framing new paradigms, and how many of you know we need to shift paradigms? for 21st century living, and he's been given the nickname the Law of Attraction Science Guy, and his latest book is How Quantum Physicists Build New Belief. He has a series of quantum physicist books, which I'm going to have him to share about, and I tell you what, this man is going to share life-changing information that's going to shift your life. So, Mr. Greg Kuhn, welcome to the Law of Attraction Radio network. Constance, what a pleasure it is to join you. Uh, and in listening to your introduction of me, uh, it makes me wonder if I can carry you with me everywhere. <laughs> well, thank you, Greg. Tell our listeners just a little bit about you personally, and then we're going to get started with how can people begin to manifest the big stuff in their lives? Well, it's funny you say that, to manifest the big stuff. When I began to write, my series, I didn't necessarily set out to create a Law of Attraction book. However, I quickly found that the Law of Attraction crowd is my hungry audience. And, uh, and we have matched up like uh, a, a beautiful match made in heaven. Uh, that 
that nickname, the Law of Attraction Science Guy. It's funny. I always wanted a nickname when I was in high school, and <laughs> I could never make one stick. And, and when somebody started calling me that, um, I loved it, and I embraced it. And, and that seems to be – I'm, I'm being embraced in two niches, and uh, the one niche is explaining the science behind the Law of Attraction. Uh, and, and I will tell you that I'm going to use an oxymoron here. I like to talk about simple quantum physics. And I know that those two uh, words, simple and quantum physics, don't often go together. I do like to keep it very simple. I think that quantum physics is an amazing and fascinating topic. It's a lot of fun to read and learn about. However, my primary concern with it, my primary reason for engaging it is for its utility for ways that we can use it to do things more fix efficiently, more effectively, to become happier, healthier, more whole, self-actualized people. In fact, I want to reference a game that I play, and you, you, you touched on how we're going to spend our holidays. I also want to say that my other niche uh, that, that has become apparent you have already touched on, and that is how to manifest the big stuff. Uh, I've my experience with folks who are familiar with the law of attraction, who practice the law of attraction, a lot of people, and I mean hundreds of people that I've spoken with, really know in their hearts that the law of attraction is a real thing, and they see it working. And by the way, when I, when I use terms like big and small, I don't mean to inflate nor demean anyone's desires. To manifest a butterfly or a phone call from a loved one, uh, or a full moon, things like that. Those are beautiful, important, and valuable manifestations. However, those usually aren't the manifestations that we first think about, that we first fantasize about when we hear about the law of attraction. We think about those things that you mentioned, having heard feedback from your friends. Uh, you know, we, we think about financial freedom. We think about a dream career where it doesn't feel like we're working every day. We think about relationships with our soulmate. We think about a fit, healthy body that we're happy to see in the mirror. We think about beautiful relationships with our children. We, these are the things that, that really grab us and captivate us, and there's a really good reason for that. And really, that's what my books are all about. And, you know, I want to say a manifestation, uh, which we both mentioned in, in our previous conversation, the fact that we've manifested each other is one of my favorite things about right. this life that I'm leading is the beautiful, wonderful people that I've had a chance to connect with, whether it's via email, Twitter, social media, Facebook, phone calls like this, or in person. It's, it's just a phenomenal benefit of putting our energy out there and a wonderful reward. I do want to say, if anyone's interested, and I know this isn't the reason anyone's tuning in, uh, I am married to my soulmate. Uh, she is a wonderful, beautiful woman. I have four phenomenal young men. I have four sons in my life, ranging from age 17 to 10. All those folks uh, make it possible for me to write and share and invest my energy into the world with the intent to be of great value. And and I do imbue all of my books, all of my my website. That is my intent every time I put my fingers to a typewriter, and, uh, and I encourage anyone, I'm sure a lot of your listeners already carry that type of intent into their actions, Th that it's a very, very powerful methodology and way of doing business, if you will. Right. Well, thank you for that. And so this is how we're going to do it, Greg. Since you are the, the science guy, uh, we're going to talk about the science behind the law of attraction. And then afterwards, we're going to talk about, you're going to give us some takeaways about how can we begin to manifest the big stuff, you know, those grandiose desires and, and, and those awesome uh, ideas and concepts that we have. So since you are the science guy, what is simple quantum physics and how does it work uh, with the law of attraction? Uh, that's a great question, a great way to start. I, I do want to say this. I, I, I know that we don't have an unlimited time frame here, and I do like to try to speak clearly and plainly, and I do like to try to keep it simple. When I start talking about this topic, I get so excited. Sometimes it's hard to rein myself back in. So 
I, I just want to say if 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 I don't go into as much depth as a listener would uh, would like, please do not hesitate for a moment. All of these concepts are explained in much greater depth, uh, and 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 I and, and based on the feedback I hear, in uh, in in, in uh, continued simple and straightforward and very accessible fashion on my website and in my books, and and heartily encourage people to contact me. And I want to say, what a great question! Uh, you know. Why am I the law of attraction science guy? Well, personally, I like to and and apparently need to sometimes have an uh, information anointed for me, if you will. I mm-hmm. like to have it blessed by the powers that be. That makes it easier for me to believe it, and that's that's just how I work. And it seems that that perspective has resonated because it is different from a lot of the literature that's out there with the law of attraction. I will say this. People who are familiar with the law of attraction are probably familiar with a, a familiar criticism, uh, I'll use a word here, called pseudoscience. People will often say, well, the law of attraction is pseudoscience. And, uh, it, you know, you'll even hear people get more critical than that. Well, I, I want to say, I, I'm not going to spend, you know, 45 minutes right. going into the scientific research. I will tell you, if you want to show yourself, if any of your of your listeners want to show themselves that it is not pseudoscience, I, hi- I heartily recommend reading the research of Dr. William Tiller, uh, who has, uh, using traditional scientific method, shown beyond a shadow of a doubt that human intention will change the, uh, the properties of physical matter, and that human intention can be imprinted into places and things and will have the same effect. Now, having said that, of course, with an audience like this, we're so blessed, we're often preaching to the choir. So what is it? You know, I don't need perhaps to convince anyone on this interview about the veracity and the authenticity of the law of attraction. What I will tell you is this. I have found that seeing how scientific the law of attraction is and can be explained is very validating and very empowering. It emboldens, I have found, emboldens law of, uh, law of attraction practitioners to have even more faith and confidence in the process they're putting in. So simple quantum physics, the bottom line is, because of quantum physics, we have essentially replaced much of what we thought we knew about the universe and how it functions. And the reason why it's important for people in our shoes, people who want to become and are becoming more powerful, intentional creators of their life experiences, is this. The reason we do things the way we do them, which if you want to use a fancy term, you can use the term paradigm. It means the same thing. The reasons we do things the way we do them, Our Western world, Western civilization, all of our paradigms are based upon the science of classical physics. It's a science that's basically been replaced by quantum physics. And quantum physics gives us new paradigms or new reasons to do things the way we do them. And the best news about that is that the paradigms from quantum physics are much, much more accurate and precise and and it really unlock for us our innate ability to create. We are manifestors. And I know this isn't news to anyone. We are manifesting our life experiences every moment that we're drawing breath. Whether we know it, whether we believe it, that makes no difference. It's how we create our universe for ourselves. What quantum physics and simple quantum physics can do through a combined study with the law of attraction is it can make us so much more powerful and intentional creators of both life experiences. And and so, Greg, our beliefs create our material reality. So for listeners out there tonight who said, okay, that sounds really good. So just in layman's terms, that means that 
people can begin to shift and change their paradigm or their beliefs or, or what they've been being or doing, and that will begin to create a different reality for them. Yeah, and, and let me, if you don't mind, let me explain that just okay. a little bit and, and, and really sharpen that using what we know from quantum physics. There's a term, it's a very important term, it's called coherence. Now, we've heard that term used. Uh, in, in our everyday vernacular, when we talk about coherence in the realm of science, what we're talking about is a unity, a, uniform, a uniformity, a synchronicity of energy, that uh, energy whose peaks and valleys are conformed to one another perfectly. When coherence occurs, extreme power is created. Uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, the photons that a light bulb emits are not coherent. If they were, they would put out as much energy as a hydrogen bomb. That's how powerful coherence is. Mm. Well, material reality, physical things in our material world are the result of coherent energy. Now, law of attraction folks will often refer to this as like vibration because that's what energy does. It vibrates. And when energy becomes coherent, it creates things. Now, a coherence between the energy of constants and the energy of what we call the quantum field, which is a omnipresent, omniscient, all-powerful, all-knowing, ever-present, eternal body of energy from which all things, including you and me and everything else, emerge. So when the energy of constants becomes coherent with like energy in the quantum field, things are formed. And that, constants, is exactly why people will instruct you to feel the feelings that the things you desire will give you, to feel those feelings before you actually hold those things in your hand, that enacts the law of attraction because when you feel the feelings of the things that you want, you are forming a coherent system with the quantum field. Now, that works very, very well with what we call the small stuff. And once again, I don't call it small stuff to demean it. It's very important. Things like butterflies or hummingbirds or a certain color car. When we start, though, talking about big stuff, the really important desires, the stuff that you've wanted for so long yet has remained just out of your grasp, the stuff that it seems like is only destined for other people, so lucky true. people, if you will. So well, true. that's where quantum physics comes to our rescue. Because, and, and, and so, Greg, for someone yeah. out there, let's just say someone out there, and they have really been desiring the t the two big ones that I get are, are money, wealth, and or love. So mm -hmm. what you're saying is, as they begin to feel like or feel the emotion of, I already have that now, and well, see that. I know it may not be that simple. Explain mm -hmm. that. Uh, what would that look like to them? Well, let, let me see this. Let me see this. For those long-held yet unmanifest desires, like money, uh, a soulmate, uh, you know, a romantic relationship, uh, or, or other types of desires that we've held and not been able to manifest, what I'm sure people have vast experience with is that those things are not usually manifest through simply holding feelings or creating positive affirmations. Positive affirmations and holding the feelings you desire are fantastic tools. However, they're very limited, and, and this is where quantum physics comes to our rescue. Those tools are very limited in manifesting those big desires, if you will, and you touched on it when we started to talk. Our beliefs the primary, the primary vehicle for co coherence between the energy of constants and the energy of the quantum field is constants' beliefs. Now, 
here's one caveat. It's not the beliefs it themselves that form coherence with the quantum field. It's the expectations that are unconsciously formed because of those beliefs. Now, expectations, because they're formed unconsciously, and I'm dabbling into neuroscience here, that's not something we can change that I'm aware of. Our beliefs are what they are. They are changeable. The expectations those beliefs produce are unconscious. It means we don't do that intentionally. The beliefs arise unconsciously. I mean, the, the expectations arise unconsciously from our beliefs. So what does that mean? If any of that has been unclear, let me simplify it. Let me break it down to its most basic element, and that is this. If there are big desires that you have yet to manifest, the one and only thing you need to do is to align your beliefs with that desire. Once on the pathway to alignment, your beliefs will automatically and unconsciously produce new and improved expectations. And as your expectations rise with your beliefs, the coherence you are creating with the quantum field will also improve in conjunction with your rising beliefs and expectations. And you will find that your physical universe will change in accordance. You know, Greg, that's so encouraging for people tonight all over the world. And so when you say align our beliefs, how do people, How would a person do that? What would that look like? Well, you know, what I teach is actually a very straightforward and a very simple process. And I, I've heard feedback from so many people that it is just that. Simple and straightforward, and, 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 I, and I know because I need to keep things simple and straightforward mm-hmm. <laughs> for me. And, and I was the first guinea pig before I began to teach other people how to do it. You know, the, let's start with a premise, and that is our beliefs are, are – actually, this isn't a premise. Let's start with some neuroscience. A belief is actually, Constance, nothing more than a practiced thought. Now, to us – and rightfully so, a belief carries with it the label of truth. It is, uh, our beliefs comprise our internal rule book. It's how we make sense of the world. It's all the rules for how, why, what, where, and when. What we often lose sight of, though, is that those beliefs are not written in stone. They were transferred to us, they were given to us by trusted sources, and they continue to be. In large measure, though, those beliefs were given to us during our most formative years. And we have thought those thoughts so repeatedly that they have become beliefs for us, and they feel like they're set in stone. What I want to say is this. Once you have identified that there are certain areas, certain desires, where, where you have been unable and unsuccessful in manifesting those desires, that is a wonderful opportunity to step back and take a look at your belief or beliefs in that area. And what I teach, I actually, I give you a scale of emotions. At the bottom of the scale, we have some of the least pleasant emotions, and at the top of the scale, some of the most pleasant emotions. And figuring out where we are on that scale is simply a matter of listening to our emotions. Now, there's a formal process for writing, uh, uh, scripting, and journaling, to get at those feelings in a more efficient and logical manner, a more orderly fashion, but it's not complicated. What I will say is this. What people who use my process learn to do is to depersonalize those emotions and see them for what they really are. And I'm going to go back to some more neuroscience here. Emotions are not who we are. They are feedback loops. They are little thermometers, if you will, that tell us, how in or out of alignment our beliefs are with our desires. I'll give you an example. If I go, if I get my paycheck on Friday and I look at it and it fills me with anger or frustration or remorse or regret or some other, you know, negative or unpleasant feeling, what that feeling is doing is it's saying, hey, Greg, 
here's a clear signal for you. Your beliefs about money are not in alignment with your desires about money. And the negative or unpleasant feeling you're experiencing is telling you that. Just like if you stepped on a piece of glass in the backyard, you'd feel some pain in your foot. Well, you don't get, you don't get mad that you're feeling pain. You look down and you say, oh, goodness, I stepped on some glass. Thank goodness the pain was there to alert me to that fact. Well, a feeling can function if we allow it to and we learn to use it in this way. It can function in the same exact way. So where we're having unpleasant, unwanted, negative emotions, those are areas that are prime areas to go in and raise our beliefs. Now, raising beliefs, we, we probably would need to do another phone call about that. And if that's something okay. that's desired, I'd be more than happy to do that. I'm, I, I, I'm not trying to shortchange anyone. I'm just not sure how much time we have left to go into the process of raising the beliefs. I will say this. We can create new beliefs for ourselves any time we choose. That is the basis for an amazing game. And it's what I'm going to be doing this Christmas because it's what I do every day. It's a game called Grow a Greater Grid. And I invite everyone to play this game. In fact, I know, Constance, from talking to you that you play it too. I, I do, so, 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 Greg, Grow a Greater Grid? Grow a Greater Grid. As in my name, or okay. grow a greater. Let's, okay, let's grow say, a greater Constance. Okay, I got yeah. you. Or grow a greater you. Fill in your name. What that game entails is, we all have desires. We all have visions of ourselves as greater, grander people, spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally, growing into these visions of ourselves is a game I call Grow a Greater You. And once we know how to do that, it becomes the most fulfilling and exciting game. I don't call it a game because it's trivial. I call it a game because it is the most fun you're ever going to have. And now you know one of the greatest secrets for playing this game every day for the rest of your life, and that is simply when you have a desire which we all will always have, I believe that to the bottom of my heart, we were born to come and desire and fulfill these desires, to grow, if you will, into grander versions of ourselves and expand into those versions of ourselves. Once we allow ourselves to have the desires we have, don't fight them, we can begin a, a process to raise our beliefs systematically slowly but surely, to begin to match and come into alignment with those desires. And when we do that, our, our desires spontaneously manifest. The quantum field connects the dots for us as we form coherence in unimaginable, infinitely creative, and spectacular ways. That's its specialty. That's what it does. Wow, this is amazing. Well, if you're just joining me, I'm speaking with best-selling Arthur Greg Kuhn, and we're talking about how you can begin to manifest the big stuff in your life. So, okay, Greg, we talked about quantum physics, and we've talked about how our beliefs cre create our material reality. So what are the biggest takeaways from your research that people can begin to implement in their daily lives to really begin to manifest that big stuff? Well, I will say this, it, and, and it, it, it's among the many things that I've been fortunate and blessed to have the opportunity to share about with so many people, and, and it, it is so rewarding to be of value, and I know you know that very mm -hmm. well. Uh, so thank you. If I've been remiss in saying that up to now, thank you for giving me this opportunity to, to share this time, to share this energy with you and with all your listeners. Uh, it, it's such a blessing. The biggest takeaway, gosh, one biggest takeaway. Well, I'm going to try to roll a couple of things up into one, and that is this. For folks who want to manifest... A, their desires, who want to become more powerful, deliberate creators of their life experiences. I will say that the goal is to create systems of coherence. Mm 
between the energy of you and the energy of the quantum field. And I have to take a step back because you are forming systems of coherence every single second of your life. That's the very reason you're sitting in that chair, watching that television, listening to the radio over your internet, enjoying that cup of coffee, talking to your friends. Every life experience you have in the material world is being created for you because you are becoming coherent with the quantum field. So in a sense, the good news is you honestly don't necessarily have to learn to do anything radically different. If you want that coherence to become more and more desirable, all you need to do is to raise your beliefs to be aligned with that desire. And I will say this. Our beliefs reside in our subconscious. And you talk about this. I know, Constance, you talk about this. Our subconscious is concerned with one thing primarily, and that is keeping us safe. It does want us to be happy, but above all else, it wants us to be safe. And the way that it gauges safety is familiarity and predictability. And that can be very frustrating for someone with the law of attraction, because our top-of-mind desires, let's take money, for example. Money is something that if you ask just about any person, they're going to tell you they love it and they want it, and they want it by the bucket full. However, oftentimes, our beliefs about money are very different than those top-of-mind desires, and it's not because we're flawed. It's not because the people who taught us about money were flawed. It's simply that we get conflicting messages. We may have heard something like money is the root of all evil. And and that's a thought we repeated over and over, among other things. The expectations that arise from a belief such as that will never form coherence with the quantum field in a fashion that will deliver financial abundance. It's just not possible. It's not how the universe works. So what do we do? if we're faced with that. And by the way, if there are areas where you're not manifesting in accordance with your with your desires, you can be assured that that is an area where your beliefs are not aligned with them. That's not my philosophy. It's not my best idea. That is the science of quantum physics, telling us exactly how the material world is created. So you don't need to doubt that or second-guess that. So if I have an area where I'm not manifesting, and my and thus my beliefs are not in alignment with my desires in that area, I can step back, pay attention to my feelings, begin a process of journaling, and I recommend moving yourself up the emotional reference chart that I've created, which is available, by the way, for free on my website. My website is whyquantumphysicists.com. It's, it's available for free. You can download it. You can print it out. Move yourself slowly but surely up the chart. If you are committed to that type of change, and I know change can sometimes be a frightening word, this is a very gradual change. It feels very natural. And the good news is is that your manifestations will begin to improve the moment you begin the journey because each tick up the reference chart is a little bit more positive. It's not too positive that the subconscious will reject it, but it's more positive than the previous. And thus, the expectations that your new emotional states and the new beliefs you're building, the expectations that are being created are a little more positive. And you can be assured that when you are moving in that direction, your material reality will be improving in accordance. And by the time you get up to joy and love, you are ready to play grow a greater you at the highest levels and have the most fun with it. And fun you will have. And and so, Greg, is that why uh, being grateful and being appreciative and being joyful and, and, you know, just loving everything that's in your life right now, you know, are those uh, emotions powerful, creative forces? Yes, they are. I, I will throw one caveat in there, and that is this. In areas of my life that I would call 
bugaboos. And that's a, I just think that's a funny word. And I that use is it, funny. <laughs> I do. I, I use that to describe the areas of my life where I've desired something for a long time, yet it's always remained out of my grasp. No matter how hard I work, no matter how positive I think, no matter what good instructions I follow, it never materializes, it never manifests into my life experience in a meaningful way that matches my desires. Those type of bugaboos. Feeling positive feelings in those areas, here's the way the subconscious responds. Because remember, we're dealing, if that is the case, what I just described, then I am assured that that is an area of my life where my beliefs are far out of alignment with my desires. Now, that doesn't mean I'm bad or wrong or flawed or need to be fixed. It simply means my beliefs are out of alignment with my desires. And you know what? I don't ever have to change my my beliefs. There's no law that says I have to. I can't assure you, though, that if I don't change my beliefs, I'm never going to manifest different things. Now, in those areas where I have bugaboos, I will say that positive thoughts and positive affirmations and concentrating on feeling very good feelings, like gratitude, like focusing on the blessings and looking for the positive, all those things I mentioned are beautiful tools, and they make us feel wonderful. When we're applying them to an area where we have a bugaboo, here's the way our subconscious reacts. My subconscious says, Greg, I love that feeling. I love that thought. That's a very positive feeling. That thought, that feeling, that activity, it makes me feel great in the moment. And I recognize that, and I honor that, and I'm going to allow us to feel great because of it. However, I also know that those thoughts, beliefs, and those thoughts and feelings and activities don't reflect what we really believe about that topic. And I'm not going to allow those things to change what we really believe because our subconscious will not change using quantum leaps like that, because it Mm -hmm. simply doesn't believe them. It knows that they're very different from the real beliefs, and it is primarily concerned with our safety. It's not concerned. It will take a painful yet predictable belief over a, 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 a wonderful feeling but new belief if the jump is too far the subconscious will always go with the reliable and the predictable that's where the frustration come in for folks trying to manifest the big stuff why do we call it the big stuff we call it the big stuff because we've never had it there's plenty of stuff that you're manifesting every day and your listeners are manifesting every day with no problems they don't think of those things as the big things because they're already in their experience The big things become the big things because they've remained out of our grasp for so long, they've become iconic. And those are the areas where we, if we want to manifest them, we have to go in and change our beliefs. Now, the good news, and I hope I've conveyed this, it's not rocket science. Even though quantum physics is rocket science, using it in this way is not rocket science. And I assure you, you do not have to have any sort of degrees, any sort of experience, any sort of advanced spiritual knowledge. You can pick this up and begin to walk with it and then skip and then run, and pretty soon you are having the time of your life because you are becoming a more powerful creator and a more intentional creator of your life experience. And, and you know, Greg, and I'm going to have to have you back for sure, that's good news for people all over the world tonight because mm-hmm. what it sounds like you're saying is that people can start wherever they are right now to mm-hmm. become deliberate creators. I, I say this. Remember when you were introducing us uh, in your in your lovely opening message and you said, I'm not sure what time it is where you are right now. And you know what I thought? I know what time it is where everyone is. I can answer that question for every single listener on this call. What time is it? It's right now. Mm. 
and I'm not trying to be a smart ass when I say that. It's always right now, and we're always right here. And I don't believe that we were put on this earth to suffer. I don't believe we were put on this earth to play small. I believe that that's where the suffering does come from, though. I believe it comes from the frustration of being unable to grow into that greater, ver- the greater vision of ourselves. And the suffering comes from the gap between our beliefs and our desires. And we long for that growth. And we long for that blossoming like a flower in the spring. Once we begin to blossom, it doesn't matter where we are. It doesn't matter if we're the furthest down we can imagine or if we're middle of the pack. Once we are part of the process of what we came here to do, and I believe that at the bottom of my heart, we came here to create a life and to create it in conjunction with all the other human beings here, to create a life of beauty, of joy. I'm not claiming that there will be no pain. There will be pain. There will be contrast. We all know that. We didn't come here to have absence of pain, but we did come here to grow emotionally, spiritually, physically, to manifest a life that looks like the dreams that we hold for ourselves. And that is our birthright. And it is our destiny if we choose to unlock it. And, you know, Greg, that's so true because that's why people are frustrated and they know that, you know, it is the will of God for them to live an abundant, prosperous, Mm -hmm. happy, harmonious, purposeful, and peaceful life. And uh, I think that the the puzzle that God has given you or the piece of the puzzle that God has given you, I, I feel that it really gives people confidence and faith to keep utilizing these universal laws and specifically the law of attraction uh, in order to become a deliberate, consistent creator. I think that's very encouraging. Well, I'm glad. And and, and that's been my experience thus far, and I thank you so much for giving me this platform and the opportunity to exchange with you. Uh, it's It's really been a blessing for me. Well, I am going to have to have you back part two. So, Greg, I'm asking you in front of all of these millions of people that's going to be listening, will you come back and and maybe give us part two? I would love to hear more about the emotional scale and what that looks like and how people can begin to implement that in their lives. So in 2014, in January, if you are available, I would love to have you come back. You know what my favorite, one of my very favorite words is, Constance? What is it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I would love that. And, and and absolutely, I would say things that I've, that I've spoken about tonight are so thoroughly available, not just in my books, but on my website. And I am not intentionally withholding or holding anything back. I would love to come back and explore any of this in greater detail. To give I want specifics. you to. I want you to. So let people know about your website. How can they purchase your book? What's your contact information, et cetera? Oh, I'd love to, and thank you. My website is whyquantumphysicists.com. And, 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 and if you get close to that spelling, <laughs> I don't know how confident you are, and I understand. Um, if you Google Greg Kuhn, you're going to find it that way, too. Now, I've got tons of articles. i got a lot of resources. Um, of course, I do have links to my books right there on the website. I've got five different books in the series. They're all on different topics. They're all priced very affordably. I never want price to be an obstacle uh, in, because every, I will tell you, every page that I write, I, I infuse to the best of my ability with the intent to be of value. And the more people who read and share that energy with me, the better it is for me. And, and certainly my hope is that it, the reader will be blessed as well. I can be contacted through my website. I love and get so many emails from people. I do my very best to read and respond to them all. Uh, of course, you 
you can go right to Amazon. You can type in Why Quantum Physicists. Because the, the books are bestsellers, Amazon will probably auto-complete that for you. And I say that with humility and excitement in combination. I, I, I'm, it's been so much fun to watch the response and to, and to see the enthusiasm, and not just the enthusiasm, but I got an email today from a woman who used this pro- the processes that I teach to rid herself of diabetes and lose 88 pounds. Wow. And, and the joy in that email, I tell you, my feet didn't touch the ground for two hours. Mm. Uh, so that sort of blessing, you, you cannot put a price tag on. And, you cannot. And, 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 to, and, to, and to know that because I decided to not pretend I was small, to have the audacity to say, here's what I have to share, here's my experience. It's not more or less valuable than anyone else's, but I'm going to share it with you. I've been so blessed that the feedback that comes back because of that audacity, and it's the audacity you have too, Constance, and I know that's what draws people to you, is that audacity to say, take the cover off the light. We didn't come here to play small, and if you don't want to play small, I know my books will be of great assistance to your fans, to your listeners. If you go on Amazon and search Greg Kuhn, and it's K-U-H-N, by the way, K-U-H-N, you're going to find all five books. They're priced so that there's no excuse to not have them tomorrow. Uh, so true. And yeah. I'm going to strongly encourage that all of you, you see the knowledge that Greg has, and, and I've read one of his books, but I'm going to go online, and I'm going to get the, the other four. And, and so, Greg, um, I'm going to have you back for part two, and we're going to pick your brain. And you've been such a blessing tonight, and I just really appreciate you. I appreciate the time, the discipline, and the effort that it takes to do what you do. I know you have four children and a wife. I don't know if you have a dog or not, but that's a lot, you know. Yeah. But 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 yeah. to really share with the world tonight, I'm so appreciative of you. And once again, go to this man's website and read those articles and just begin to take small baby steps. Begin to implement um, what he said tonight so that you can begin becoming a consistent, deliberate creator. And so, Greg, once again, thank you, and we'll be talking again. And uh, this is Constance Arner with the Think, Believe, and Manifest talk show. So grateful that you've joined me again. Tell three of your friends about this show, and don't and forget and don't and remember, I got that out. <laughs> Go to my website for feelingyourpurpose.com and make a quality decision that you are going to have a joyful and prosperous holiday. Well, I love you, God loves you, and always remember this, the best is yet to come. You better believe it. Thank you for listening to Think, Believe, and Manifest. Constance will be back next week with another inspirational show. For more information, go to fulfillingyourpurpose.com. Or send Constance an email at Constance at FulfillingYourPurpose.com.